right. Well, welcome back, everyone. Jonathan Welton here. I want to talk to you today about this passage in Matthew 13 that talks about the end of the age. Now, there's a lot of prophecy that's been floating around literally for decades, the last several decades, talking about this uh, billion soul harvest or talking about uh, the end of the age harvest or uh, there's harvesting angels that people talk about going out to to reap the harvest. There's a lot of harvest language out there. So I'd like to just talk about that a little bit. Um, so let's start with reading the passage. This is Matthew chapter 13. Uh, we'll start in verse 37. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. So he's describing the, the parable of the weeds, and he's, he's explaining some of this. The field is the world. The good, ste- the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. The enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Now that's sort of the key verse. That's the end of verse 39. As the weeds are pulled up, and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Now, I'm just going to pause right here. Uh, We've seen it twice now, this phrase, the end of the age. Now, uh, what I read last uh, in one of my other videos recently, uh, where I talked about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, you can look up that video if you want to see it in more detail. I read a quote from William Barclay in Revelation chapter Uh, uh, the beginning of his commentary on Revelation in uh, the first chapter. And William Barclay made clear that to the Jewish people, uh, the concept was that all of time was divided into two ages. There was the present age that they lived in and the age to come. The age that they lived in at that time was pre-cross. It was the Mosaic old covenant age that they were living in. After the cross, after the destruction of 70 AD of Jerusalem and the temple and Levitical priesthood and all of that is destroyed, we were launched into the new covenant age in which we live now. So there's the Mosaic old covenant age and there's the new covenant age, which is the age to come that we live in now. Now, with those two concepts in place, Here it's talking about the harvest is the end of the age. Now for them, they're living right before the end of the age that they were in, the old covenant mosaic age. We have taken, unfortunately, modern uh, teachers have taken this verse that talks about end of the age and they've turned it into end of the world. But the word is end of the age. That's a time period, not the end of the world, planet, earth, the globe. There's actually two different Greek words that are used. Uh, For here, it says age, which is aeon, which when you do a study of that, which I have, I actually have a book coming out in the future where uh, I look at all the different uses of this word aeon and, and how it's properly understood, which is what I'm explaining to you today. Um, Aeon is age and time period, and they were coming to the end of the aeon of Moses. The age of Moses, the old covenant, was dying, and it comes to an end at the, at, at the first century. And after the first century, the new aeon, the new age, the new covenant, the new creation is launched into the world. And so we have here the end of the age. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Well, when did that happen? That actually happened with the destruction of the temple in 70 AD when it was burned to the ground and then the city was burned. Uh, Literally, uh, there's, um, there's documents that Josephus and Tacitus and some of the early uh, historians talk about the city being burned with fire and that it became like a blazing furnace, which actually is further on. It talks about in verse 42, they will throw them into the blazing furnace where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a blazing furnace where 
that's a description, a descriptor of what Jerusalem became like in 70 AD. Now, what happened at 70 AD is so significant to understanding the scripture. Jesus here in Matthew 13 is predicting the end of the age of Moses and the blazing furnace that's going to take place and the great division between the church and the old covenant world, which is exactly what occurred. This was the division. It actually, uh, some of the, the early church writers such as Esubius, he wrote that not one Christian died in the destruction of Jerusalem because they properly understood Matthew 24 was a warning to flee Jerusalem when you see the armies surround Jerusalem. So not one Christian died in the 70 AD destruction where 1.1 million Jews died in Jerusalem. Not one Christian died. They all fled to a nearby mountain called Pella. And so they're over here and those harvest angels have brought believers to the kingdom and brought them out of Jerusalem. Jerusalem becomes a blazing furnace and this destruction occurs. Now, that being said, we have to back up to where did this all come from, this, this communication about a billion souls and, and a major revival and the harvest and, and partnering with harvest and going after harvest and revival harvest. and. I could probably write a book with the word harvest in 20 different titles because harvest, harvest, harvest is so overused as a term. Uh, why? Why? Well, it sounds really good to say we're about to have this massive revival, then Jesus will come. Less people will be left behind when the rapture happens. So that's a good thing, I suppose. Uh, all of these concepts, though, are, are based on assumptions that that's what this passage is about, but it's not what this passage is about. So with that, I just want to challenge your thinking. Don't, don't get all wound up about the end of the age is upon us. No, it's not. The end of the age happened a long time ago. You're in a new covenant age. It's a long-term thing. You're going to be here. This age continues for a long, long time as we bring heaven into the earth. And so you get to be a part of that. It's not just about one billion souls. It's about all seven billion at the time we're making this video. And so uh, join me in thinking longer and bigger. We have to get a bigger vision to bring heaven to earth. So thank you so much uh, for being willing to watch this and challenge your thinking a little bit. And uh, appreciate you guys. Bless you.